Hi, folks. Um, all right, a little bit of a Captain's Log supplemental here. Uh, I forgot to press record. So I'm going to give you, um, so with regards to uh, the last lecture, you know, a lot of a lot of it was on the Beyond GDP, specifically looking at this inequality and stuff. So that, um, a lot of that is indeed covered. Let's pop over here uh, in this Beyond GDP lecture. Okay, so this is on the, um, on the website. Uh, you know, going through leisure and all of that, the log normal distribution. Okay, you can see here's an actual real live example, which I kind of calibrated to uh, US numbers. Okay, so you can see the um, kind of median here around 38, 40,000 bucks a year. Uh, and then you got these big tails, right? So people going out to uh, 140, 160. Now, you know, obviously, there's people all the way, 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 way out there. Okay, and that's accounted for here. It's just that as a proportion of 330 million people in the US, that's gonna be exceedingly small. Okay, so maybe you could actually plot it so you plot the log of the density and you, you'd then be able to kind of see these heavy tails. But um, suffice to say, this gives you that sort of skewed right tail um, with an otherwise, with otherwise having those sort of both people in this region here. Okay, and that's, um, Pretty similar to what the US looks like. Okay. Um, and then going through, it's like, okay, so welfare is the expectation of the log here. That means it's the integral over, like, if you index people from zero to one, it's the, inter the integral over that. Which I'll write, often I'll write is this E sort of blackboard E uh, expectation of the log of C. In assuming a log number distribution, that's going to be that mu parameter. The, the mean it's so it's not the mean but it's the mean of the log of, of that okay which is what we see here all right um okay and then here's you know we talk we have these equations linking right the theory side stuff which is mu and sigma with the data side stuff which is that c bar the average income and sigma or sorry and g the gini coefficient okay so mu and sigma are on the theory side c bar and g the gini coefficient are on the data side Okay, um, so this equation here, telling C bar, which is the expectation of C, is just e to the mu plus one half sigma squared. Okay, and that's just, um, you just calculate the integral, turn through it, slash, look it up on Wikipedia under log normal distribution, and you can see this is what you get. Okay, so from that, you can see that, you know, if you invert this equation, take a log and subtract, you're gonna get that mu is equal to that log of the average income which is not the same. Uh, so this is the log of the expectation of the income, not the expectation of the log, it's a different, uh, minus this sigma squared, which is a penalty basically for inequality, right? Because with inequality, um, if you think about the average income, if you have more variance, more, a higher sigma, okay? Then you get some poor people and you get some rich people. But with the log normal system, the rich people, the, the, you know, you get you have your rich people, the poor people, they can only be as poor as zero. You know, so if your if your if your median income is forty thousand dollars, the poor people, the poorest they could be is zero. The richest you can be is unbounded. It's all the way up to hundreds of billions, tens or hundreds of billions of dollars, right? So, inducing variance in this log normal world actually pushes the mean out to the the right to higher numbers because the rich people are much much richer than the those those offsetting poor people. Okay, the median will be the same because it's sort of like if, if the median is the point at which um, half the people are, are poorer than that and half the people are richer than that, that's doesn't, it doesn't matter if you exponentiate things or if you log or take the log of things, it's just, you know, half and half, okay? It's the midpoint. The mean is, is, is averaging all of these points, okay? And so it's, it's, it's gonna be uh, influenced by the, the, the weight of the tails, okay? So, um, that's why you get this type of equation here. We're having more variance, more sigma squared gives you actually a higher average C, okay? Um, all right, so this is sort of the first piece of the puzzle, okay? And then the second piece involves this Gini coefficient, okay? And remember the Gini coefficient, we can we construct from the Lorenz curve, okay? Which, which we'll talk about, which I'm gonna define for you now. So the Lorenz curve, um, this is similar to what I wrote in the, in the notes, the Lorenz curve, you know, maps from an income quantile. Okay. So where you take, uh, 
everyone in the country, order them from poorest zero to richest one. Okay. And then you say, okay, well, look at, you know, look at this 20th percent income quantile. All right. Let's say that's, you know, the median is 40,000. I don't know. Maybe that's 10,000 or something. Okay. So look at everyone with less $10,000 or less in terms of income and see what share of the total national income do they account for. Now, the, the people that make $10,000 or less a year, I mean, they're, they're pretty low on the income distribution. They're, they're lower than the average, certainly. Um, and so they're going to account for a relatively small share. Okay. So maybe that's, it's going to be less than 20% for sure. It must be. Okay. So maybe it's like 10% or something. Okay. So you can, you can do that for any given point. All right. So the, this is like where you see that 80, 20 stuff. It's like the, you know, the top in this world, the top 20% of earners, right. From 80% onwards account for about 40% of the income. They account for an outside share of the income. They're, they're a select group of richer people selected on the, based on their income. Uh, and so, you know, that's that's what, kind of what you're seeing here is, is, is how these shares all play out. The Lorenz curve just maps all of this out. So this blue thick line here is the Lorenz curve, mapping those all out, okay? Now the reference curve is this dotted line. This is what you would, this is the Lorenz curve you would get if everyone had almost exactly the same income, okay? Because then the, the people that are like the poorest aren't that much poorer in absolute terms because everyone's just clustered, you know, it's, it's just, these are just matters of like dollars that, that differentiate people in terms of their income. Everyone's clustered. So they're, they're not that much poorer. And so that, you know, the bottom 20 is going to account for about 20% of the income. The bottom 50 is going to account for about 50. So this is a highly equal society. And so you're going to have like basically a 45 degree line from zero, zero to one, one. Okay. As you get more unequal, this curve bows downwards towards something that would just sort of look like a flat line with a steep spike at the end. So this is a little unequal as you bowed this curve farther and farther down and get more and more unequal. Okay. Because you, you, if you had a highly unequal society, these lower income quantiles, quantiles would account for almost none of the income. And once you get to the, this really rich folk at the top, then you, you, they'd account for almost everything. So the, the, in a highly unequal society, the Lorentz curve would go out like this and then shoot up at the end. Okay. And then the G coefficient is this light blue area times two. Okay. So it's the area in this curve, how far you are from that perfect equality world. And that area, because the, the biggest you can get is this triangle here, which is area half, you multiply it by two. So then it becomes a zero one metric. Okay. So when you're perfect equality at zero, okay, you have zero inequality. And when you have extremely unequal society and you, it goes out like this on the x-axis and so then shoots up, the area is about a half, which means your Gini coefficient is one. Okay. So it's a zero one metric, zero being perfect equality, one being um, total inequality. Okay. All right. So that's I'm going to spell out some stuff here. Um, and then, so the last piece of that puzzle is how do you, you we want to get from G, the Gini coefficient to its underlying theoretical parameter, sigma, the variance of that log normal distribution. Okay. Turns out, do another integral. You like integrate to find the Lorentz curve and then you generate it again to find the area. Not easy, but it's doable. And you don't have to do it because it's on Wikipedia. Uh, you can find this, this mapping. So this will tell you, if you observe a Gini coefficient G, say 0.3 in the data, it'll map into, you know, some sigma like 0.3 in, in the uh, <clears throat> uh, theoretical kind of world. Okay. Um, and that phi is just, is some function. It's a, a previously well-defined function. It's called the cumulative density of the standard normal. It just goes from, ranges from zero to one. Okay. So when sigma is zero, it's from a half to one. So when sigma is zero, this phi takes on the value of a half, which means it's two times a half, which is one minus one, which is zero. Okay. So zero inequality corresponds to zero genie and a zero sigma. Okay. No variance. Full total out of control inequality uh, would, well, that would be an infinite, or very large sigma. Okay. In which case phi takes on the value of one. Okay. And this is like phi of something. So it takes up a very large sigma, gives it the value of one. So you get two minus one, which is one. Gini equals one, so full inequality. Okay. So it kind of makes sense. There's this one to one mapping. Okay. So then going back. You know, if we know we, so we can measure log C, that's the average income. So we can measure C bar, that's the average income. 
take a log. We can found sigma by inverting that equation from the genie, plug it in here, and then we get mu. Okay, and mu is our welfare, which we found here. Mu equals welfare. That's our welfare metric. Okay, so we can compute this in the data because we know we can see C bar, the average income, and the Gini coefficient, say. And so we can compute this uh, welfare metric. Okay, so um, all right, so that's that's basically what I went over in, in class. Okay, we're going to talk about exactly how you operationalize that and put that into... Um, uh, well, so effectively this equation. Okay, you can go through it if you want in, in the lecture slides, but you can you can operationalize that by um, you know, incorporating all these factors. So you know, consumption, C, leisure, inequality, which we're calling sigma here. U bar, I'll talk about. It's kind of like the value of just living baseline. All right, so, um, and then you multiply by EI, which is the life expectancy. Okay, so you take your utility, per year and you multiply it by the expected number of years. Okay, that's your total welfare. Okay, so that's that's what we'll get into next time. Okay. And then just a bunch of we'll look at so how did the data pan out. Okay. Um for now though, uh we're gonna do a little bit of um data analysis. Okay. So actually let me sorry, jump it around here. Let me go to the website. All right. So first of all, the the data that we're looking at Today is going to be the pen world tables here, which is linked. Okay. Um, this is the, the website gives you kind of general info. I, I, I just have it internally to the website. If you just want to directly download the XLS, just click on that XLS button. Um, yeah, so you can, you can download that to your computer and then I'm going to upload it to, uh, Google sheets in a minute. Okay. So like I've already downloaded it to my computer. Okay. Um, then there's also some other stuff like the Madison Project gives you more historical data on GDP farther back than Penworld Tables. The Beyond GDP data is once we've done all this Beyond GDP stuff and computed these metrics, then that's that's what that table has. The, the these Jones and Cleanout as part of the paper computed this this data for us. Okay, uh, it doesn't have quite the same coverage as Penworld Tables, but it's pretty good. Okay, and then there's some other stuff on, on uh, inequality globally. All right. Okay, so download. Penworld tables, click the SLS, save it to your computer. I already did that. Then we go over to Google Sheets. Okay, you can do this. It's a little unintuitive, but you click open file picker, upload, select, and I'm already in this the right directory. So PWT 110.0. Okay, so we're gonna open that. All right, and uh, give it a second. Um, yeah, so Google Sheets, I like Google Sheets. I think it's pretty good, All right? First, I'm gonna, because of the way the UI is set up, I actually, it's better to be over here. Okay, so I'm gonna be over here now. Um, so uh, Google Sheets is good because, I don't know, it's web-based, kind of fail-safe for the most part. Um, pretty good, you know, minimalist interface. That's that's what I like. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger. First, let me click here. Mm. Don't want to go too far. How does this look? Uh, let's do this. Okay. I think this is the, a good midpoint. All right. So, uh, yeah. So you got these different um, tabs or sheets on the bottom here. Info, legend, data. Info is just sort of metadata, like who, who wrote it? Feenstra, Inkar, and Timmer. Okay. They wrote it, um, which we thank them. It's a lot of a lot of work to aggregate all this data. Okay. And there, there are probably other people that were involved too. Um, legend. Okay. This is going to tell you the definitions of all the variables. Okay. Um, country code, each country has a little three digit ISO country code, uh, the name of the country, the unit, the year. Okay. So each row is a country and a year. So each country is going to have a bunch of rows corresponding to one for each year. Each column is all these different variables that we're interested in. So you got various GDP metrics. There's a bunch of different ways they're measuring GDP, okay? Mm, depending on is it consumption side versus output expenditure versus output side. Are you, how are you adjusting for inflation? How are you adjusting for currencies? Are you using PPP? We don't need to get into all of that. I usually use this RGDP right at the bottom here, RGDP NA, but there's no right answer, okay? Um, population, employment, average hours worked, 
total in the year. So that's going to be between two and three thousand, or maybe fifteen and fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred. Human capital index, some measure of how educated people, how, many, how much education people are getting, um, and so on. A bunch of other stuff. Okay, some of it you really don't like all this stuff. I, I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, so, um, but pretty good set of data here. Okay, and then if we go over to the data tab, it's the actual data. Um, so you have sort of the in, the row info is like the country. So they have like the code, the name, and then like uh, the currency, and then the year. Okay, so basically you care about the country, name, and the year. Currencies, whatever it is, okay? Um, because a lot of them are, are you're, you're the, the, like the RGDP stuff, you're already converting to a common currency, which is US 2010, okay? So, or, uh, sorry. See, RGDP NA is real GP a constant 2017 US prices. Okay, so we're converting to a common year currency. Okay, so, boom, what kind of data? The other thing about Google Sheets is that it doesn't load everything into memory. So if your computer doesn't have much memory, it's just like showing you what you need to know for that given page. Okay, so um, USA turns out farther down near the bottom. Too far. Easy. Here we go. USA. All right, so it's sorted by the ISO code. There's Uruguay. Okay, so we're going to take, well, first, okay, here's how I do it. Take the header. That gives you like the first row. We're gonna need that because we're gonna make a new sheet that we're gonna call USA. Boom, and we're gonna paste that here. Okay, so now we know kind of like what col each column is, okay? And then we're gonna go back. We're gonna take from the first 1950 until the end, which is 2019. Copy, Control C, Control V, boom, paste it. All right, so now we have all the US data kind of you know, split out into its own sheet, just so we don't have to worry about this uh, scrolling and everything. Now it's just USA, all right? Um, okay, so that's step one. All right, step two is we wanna do stuff with this data, right? So we wanna uh, compute stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna create yet another one. So we're gonna kind of keep that USA as like pristine data that we're not gonna accidentally mess up, right? So if we create a new sheet, I'm gonna rename it to just growth, I guess. Um, this is gonna be, computed columns okay so so what i'm going to do is copy i'll copy just the usa in the year okay so just so we know this is the usa in the year whatever okay so it's it's all aligned by rule. okay um and then uh what i'm going to do is i want to compute functions of this okay and in in this Google Sheets and in any Excel kind of environment, you can reference other sheets, okay? Um, and so what I wanna do is, let's say I wanna compute GDP per capita. Okay, so then I can go uh, here. Let's say I wanna use our GDP NA. Okay, so what I need to do is say, okay, I'm interested in our GDP NA. That's column S. I don't need to copy it, I'm gonna reference it. Column S, uh, and also I'm interested in population because I'm going to divide these two, GDP per population, okay? Uh, and that's column G. So column S divided by column G in sheet USA. How do we do it? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do GDP per, let's call it GDP per, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say USA G2, okay? So that's sheet USA, no, sorry, S2. Sheet USA, column S, Row two, because the first row is the identifier. Take that, put it in parentheses, divide by sheet USA, column G, row two also. So it's the ratio of G, that RGDPNA, column S to the population in column G. Enter. And new this year, which I'm very excited about. I was excited about it when I did the lecture the first time and forgot to record it. And I'm still excited about it. Autofill. Boom. Okay, so... Uh, it just automatically goes and it doesn't fill out to infinity. It just goes until the data ends. Okay, so it's getting smart, alarmingly smart. Um, okay, so now we have GDP per capita. Okay, so now we can do other stuff. Now, um, I forgot to mention, if you want to do like a mathematical formula in a, in a sheets or Excel style uh, spreadsheet, you just start it out with an equal sign. Okay. So this one is just a number, 1950. This says equals, you know, that cell divided by the other cell. 
Okay, so here I'm going to do like equals log, which is the logarithm. Um, uh, it should be log the natural log. Okay, if it doesn't say, it's usually the natural log. Of um, <clears throat> here we're in our own sheet, so I'm going to just do the log of C two, which is the log of GDP per capita. It shows you there. Okay, and then it kindly asks you if you want to autofill, and you do. Okay, so um, that's the log of GDP. So let's let's give that log of GDP per fold it. All right, so now we got log GDP. Okay, so we can do all sorts of stuff. Okay, um, we can bring in capital. Take the log of that, multiply it by something. We can compute these different uh, shares and everything like that. Okay, so um, I'll get into that next lecture, how to go through that growth accounting thing. Okay, um, but for now, so I to say we can we can do sort of arbitrary computations on these data series. Okay, um, bring in other stuff and and appropriately normalize it, compute growth contributions, compute these technological residuals and see how they're, they're growing over time. Okay. So, um, but right now it's just num it's a wall of numbers. Okay. Not super pretty. Uh, the last thing I'll show you is um, also how do we, how do we plot this? Okay. It's not so bad. Okay. So I'm going to plot just GDP per capita for now. So you select your rows. So in this case, year and GDP per the columns rather G year and GDP per year is going to be our X variable. GDP per is going to be our Y variable. To select them, insert chart, wait a second, and then oop, boom, we got a chart. Okay, I'll put it right up here, nestle it in. Okay, so um, I don't know, I think that's cool. Uh, you know, you can customize it on the right here if you don't like how it looks in certain ways. I think this actually is okay. Um, you know, one thing we could do is you know, GDP per capita USA 1950 to 2019. Now I got like a proper title. Okay, you can go over here. GDP per capita. All right, we just capitalize the year for consistency. Okay, so you can you can you can just sort of edit all of that stuff. And this looks pretty nice. I don't think it looks quite as nice as it would in, in Python, but it looks pretty nice. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I I guess you can drag. I don't know. I don't know what, what all this stuff does, but there's a lot of different things that are sort of popping up when I mouse over it. Okay. Um, okay. So we can do that. All right. And then let me, let me also do just so you can show you how things can kind of break down. Uh, if you like initially, at least, um, let me insert a chart of now I did year and log well, GDP per capita. Okay. That's computing something. Computing something for sure. My internet's kind of slow. There we go. Um, okay, so now this doesn't look so good because the act, the scale is is off. The log logarithm doesn't start at zero. In fact, it starts at minus infinity. Okay, so uh, we need to fix that. Frankly, I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. Oh, that's not a thing. Thought it was a thing, but it wasn't. I'm probably just going to edit all of this out anyway. Next post, so. Um, the up. Oh. I thought there. Okay, four to five. Boom. Actually, it's similar. So we took the log. So it kind of get yeah, things if that's a word, which is not. Um. Yeah. Okay. So um, cool. So now it's four to five. And it looks looks okay. No complaints. Right. Um. Now, why do we care about the log? Okay, and let's log GDP. So when I talk about make your plots legible and, and stuff like this, this is what I'm talking about. Um, you know, label stuff. USA 1950 to 2019. You must, and I must capitalize here. Okay, so there we go. That's like favorite plots. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so why why do you log? Well, with the log, you can, you know, it, it's kind of nice because, uh, you know, our, our baseline is kind of exponential growth. Let me, let me make this like more square. Our baseline is like exponential growth, okay? So um, if you thought you were going to have exponential growth and you plotted a log of an exponentially growing series, you would expect it to be linear, okay? 
straight line in this log space. Okay, so that's the baseline. Um, now, is it? Well, certainly, see that thing at the end? That's 2008, right? Um, that wasn't good. And what, what it almost looks like, I would say the story I take away from this is that until like 1980, you had one slope. Slope kind of ticks down a little bit after that. Okay, it's subtle, but it kind of does. And then 2008, it's like the slope didn't change afterwards. It just kind of like jogged down a little bit and then kept going. So like 2008 was just like one boom shock that we kind of had some trouble recovering from. Right. So, um, yeah, so we can talk about that more, how to interpret these, but that's the, those are, that's the basics, right? From this, you can, you can just add in different mathematical operations, do different chart options and all of that, if you can figure it out. Um, and, uh, yeah, the sky's the limit. Okay. So, um, all right. So that's it. That's it for now. Uh, hopefully this covered everything that I forgot to record, um, in the actual lecture. And I think I actually was a little bit less rushed in this Excel stuff. I covered a little bit more. So maybe there was even some improvement. Okay, so uh, yeah. All right, so I'll see you all next week. Bye.